Welcome back to Bullet Catcher Gaming. This is, of course, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, this is part two for the community feedback regarding the features we want in game. For anyone who is just watching this video for the first time or watching one of our videos for the first time, um, what this relates to is that we made a video called Features Needed in Game, where we listed some of the things that we really wanted to see in Breakpoint. We had so much fantastic feedback from all of you guys that we decided to make a two-part video because there was so much of it. Um, the first part went up a few days ago. There's already been lots of new comments on that one, so we've tried to include some of those into this as well. Uh, and this is part two of that. So I'm not going to hang around, um, but just very quickly, if you want to join our Discord, please do. We have a photo competition going on at the moment. We have all sorts of different competitions, things like that. Great place to come and meet people if you want to play the game with. And um, Knuckles, one of our admins on the Discord, it provided the thumbnail for this video. So let's get in with it. So, um, okay, um, big army base or a carrier. Now, we know that there is a carrier um, in the game, but it's not been seen since. Um, we don't know what's going on with it. So a big army base, I think they mean four allies. Um, that could be interesting. Um, it depends on the story, of course, but um, I think it's something that we might get. You might get some kind of allied base, possibly, later on down the road. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it will work or not, but it's an interesting idea. Um, now, pilots in the choppers. Now, once again, you're supposed to be solo or just with your teammates, but I do understand the realistic parachute in kind of goes out the window when you jump out your helicopter and it just falls to the ground. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it, it, it could. I see that it does kind of seem a bit silly that you just jump out your helicopter without a pilot, but that's an interesting one. Um, enemy classes, um, similar to the Los Eschaneros from Wildlands. Now, I'm well up for this because I thought Fallen Ghosts was amazing in Wildlands. What It was a fantastic DLC, the atmosphere that they created in it. Um, and all of the enemies having the jammers and, and invisible units and things like that. I'd love to see those return. Um, that is a fantastic suggestion. Um, what about dragging bodies and not lifting them? That makes complete sense. I don't really need to go too much in depth in that. Um, dragging the bodies is so much better, much more realistic as well. Now, change the cutscenes um, back to like Wildlands, where you keep all your gear on. Yes, please, definitely, definitely want this. I find it quite frustrating that you've got your balaclava up, and your helmet on and night vision and all the rest of it and then you stop to talk to someone and you it's gone and then two seconds later it's back again now i understand if you were talking to someone you probably would remove your balaclava or whatever but bring it back to how it was in wildlands i much preferred that um great suggestion um yeah so what about uh more game modes within the game people are asking uh we've done a video series called escape and evasion uh, we've got another one coming up soon. Um, just to add a few more modes in there, Wildlands added more modes as it went along. Um, it really does depend on whether you want modes or whether you want more kind of missions, really. But let, let's be honest, we'd like both, I think. But an escape and evasion mode or something along those lines could be quite good fun. Now, what about um, set classes to AI teammates? So obviously, you've got the classes within the game why not be able to put them on there and they could use special abilities um, that you have you know like get them to use the um, panther kind of cloaking spray when you go in to fight a behemoth or something that's quite a good idea now um, also be able to use your skill points and have a skill tree um, for each of your ai teammates well this is actually going to come to another point that i was going to raise later on regards to the excess skill points that haven't been used um, we've all got loads of them, I'm sure. Now, that's a great way of being able to use your skill points, using them on AI teammates. But of course, there are a lot of us and who don't like AI teammates or who just choose not to use them and prefer to go solo. So I do think skill points could be utilised in another way. Um, one of those ways, I think, is um, being able to use them when you 
go through your classes so let's say you're at class you're at rank 14 on panther and you're stuck on it for some reason you can use a skill point and jump to 15 that might be quite a nice idea i'm sure ubisoft um, can come up with an idea a way or, or, or use them trade them in for scale credits or something like that but having so many skill points that are not used is is frustrating what about enemies can mine and booby trap bases fantastic idea make it even harder you know on the raid you do have um, mines littered around but the, there's none in the main game be quite nice if you had mines outside the bases and certain booby traps um, pvp people are saying what about use the entire map now we did cover this in our pvp video recently um, but yeah having used the entire map and have different teams kind of like a mini not necessarily a battle royale but like a team based kind of battle royale where you could have uh, you've got to get an objective faster than somebody else and things like that instead of having small little pvp maps i think it could bring more people into pvp um jet aircraft kind of goes without saying um that's quite a good one you know the the aircraft are kind of lacking a little bit maybe it might be too overpowered i don't know but it's an interesting idea um more npcs in the world now this, I, this for me is, I'd love this pretty much over most things at the moment. I think as the storyline has gone on and you keep taking down bad guy after bad guy, it, they're still stuck in this kind of, you know, nothing's going on and they can't get out or whatever. I'd like to see more going on. You know, scientists driving from one place to another, just more people, more enemies, just more of everything. There sometimes seems parts of the map where there's just nothing going on. Now you do want some kind of wilderness type places where there isn't much going on, but and then there's other places like you drive down one of the kind of main roads and you don't really see anybody. So yeah, that that's a really good idea. Faction mission rewards returning and more interesting missions. If you want to see more about faction missions, we've got a great faction mission video um, that went up last week for our ideas about how to improve faction missions. Um, so we've covered skill points um, and uh, yeah you could buy class ranks and things like that that's what I was saying on there um, what about and people are saying what about an explosive experts class I mean that could be a good one um, it, if you think about it we don't have anything like that we don't really have an, an someone who utilizes the LMG as their class as you've already got kind of sniper and assault I suppose you can include that in Assault, but having a separate one for one of those two could be interesting. Crossplay. This is another really interesting one. You know, we've got players on PC and Xbox and PlayStation can't play with each other, whereas in a lot of other titles they can. So crossplay, I think that's a fantastic suggestion. Really, really like that one. What about create your own patches? You know, just have a patch editor where you have some basics that you can put together, put colours in. You can, so if you run with a squad or you're a milsim group, you could create your own patch instead of using the ones in the game. Really, really like that one. Crawling left to right. Now, initially, some people might go, well, that's not really a big one. But it really is, if you think about it, when you lay down, you, you have to, sometimes if you're trying to get into a good sniping position or something like that and keep your head down, it really can be hard to manoeuvre, whereas in Wildlands you could just crawl left to right, whereas in Breakpoint you kind of have to shuffle backwards and move a bit forward. It's a bit, it's a bit all over the place the way you do that. So yeah, if you could just crawl left to right, I think that's a really, really interesting idea. I like that one. Uh, that, that would make a big difference, I think, and it's a small one. I think these are the kind of ones that they really could do without too much difficulty. Um, yeah, I like that one. What about um, different classes affect the world? Now, I'm not sure how this would work, but it's an interesting idea. People are saying, for example, if you had the Echelon class, you would have, you could en enter buildings via vents. Whereas if you had the Assault class on, you can't have access to that. So you'd have to obviously work out a way and have special things maybe on each building or built into missions um, it's not something I can see them doing but it is a it is an interesting idea um, I think you'd really have to kind of implement that into a brand new game um, weapon balancing um, correct rounds in the correct weapons I mean this comes up over and over again 
why some of the weapons are a they're incorrectly uh, sometimes ubisoft will say this is the gun and we get loads of people saying to us that's not the right gun you know recently in the amber sky um the the british assault rifle was wrong um it, it it's yeah you know the 50 cal doesn't shoot 50 cal rounds things like that i think this is not something i need to go into i think every single person out there recognizes that that's an issue that needs to be fixed there's so much with the weapon balancing as well um they're a bit all over the place um i mean the the 4ac at the moment is seriously probably you could probably say it's overpowered but i hope they don't change it because i love it um, more optics, um, Russian camos. There's loads of people saying that they want to see loads more Russian camos and gear. Um, seems to be people really like that stuff. I mean, people listed all sorts of names of different types of Russian camos they wanted. Um, so yeah, put them in there. I mean, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully Ubisoft going to pay attention to this. And there were so many comments about it. I was really quite surprised at how much. Um, how much love there is for the russian gear so yeah i mean it makes sense with bow dark and all the rest of it but um yeah so there we go um what about um what about tanks i've always said i want a tank in the game you know why not i think a tank would be fun a proper tank not an apc but a tank you know um driving mechanics as well going into that i mean some of the driving mechanics do feel a bit slidey uh, sometimes I feel bit I mean don't get me wrong I don't find them too bad I think they're okay um, but they could definitely be improved and, and what about if you could go back to like Wildlands where you could hide in the trunk I, I was a big fan of that I think there was more reason to in Wildlands than there is in Breakpoint but you know bring it back um, th that's a good one the trunk of all vehicles uh, being available again I, I do like that now, this is one that I definitely, and I have actually spoken to Ubisoft about this myself, more treasure hunts. So in Wildlands, in between things where you were waiting for new things, or they would have the community challenges, and they'd have things like the Yeti and El Tio and stuff like that, where you had to do investigative work for things that were already there. This is huge. I mean, these could be small things that could be implemented within the faction missions or just something that's added once a month. A small little mystery for you to go and find. Something new to do whilst you're waiting for something else or a, or a new update. Um, an option to remove all drones. So that's an interesting one. So obviously they have brought in options to reduce certain drones. But what people are saying is click a button and all drones are gone. So Behemoth Towers would be unmanned um you could just walk in i don't know if they'll do that but i mean i don't there's i don't suppose there's a reason why they can't do that uh it just depends i suppose if they would want to or not or they think that would be fair or not but i mean if you've got the game and you've played it inside and out it might be fun to just turn them all off um i'm sure some milsim groups would quite enjoy that um take just one ai teammate um, with you so you have four AI teammates of course what about if you could take just the one or just two and one of your friends could jump in so you could mix and match if you know what I mean friends and AI teammates could fill up your squad that's a great idea um, that people going back to talking about bases again that they feel that Nomad needs an actual kind of base mm, I think we've covered that before yes I, I could see that maybe but I don't know I'd rather have a kind of option where you could take over a base a bit like the division two and um, later on it can be taken back off of you and you've got to fight for it back uh canine companion that could be really fun that could be interesting uh not sure how it would do with some of the glitches in the game i can just imagine trying to get your canine into a boat yeah i mean oh yeah i dread to even think about how that might go but yeah it's an interesting one um yeah, so be able to use multiple patches on your camos and on your gear uh, instead of just the one. You know, have three, four, five different ones, whatever you want. Uh, enemies to set up ambushes. Um, that's a nice one. We've kind of gone into a bit of that before. Uh, tier 1 mode from Wildlands. Bring that back. That was a good one as the game gets harder and harder and harder as you go through. Um, of, I know a lot of people play on Elite already, um, so I'm not sure how, it would have to be made harder than that. 
Um, but yeah, it's a, it's another good one. Why not bring it in there? Being able to plan and execute missions, um, kind of customize enemy loadouts and skins as well. Now I love the idea of being able to customize the enemy skins and the loadouts. That is a great idea. Being able to plan and execute missions, maybe in error one or something, you could look at the mission first to be given a map of each base. You, if you had friends, you could then maybe put pointers on there and show you're going to come in from there. I'm going to be there. You're going to be the sniper is going to be covering us from up there. I like that idea. I think that's a really fun idea, and it would be a fairly simplistic thing. I wouldn't have to go too in depth. Um, but I quite like that. What about hacking mortars? You know, mortars are in the game, but you can't hack them. That's quite annoying. Um, you know, that I think that 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 wouldn't be difficult. I don't think to go and do that. Um, you know, why why not? Shotgun suppressors and LMG suppressors. Wildlands had um, had them. Um, why hasn't Breakpoint? Well, there's loads of things that Wildlands has that Breakpoint still hasn't got. Hence, why we're making these types of videos. Um, to be able to sling your weapon, I mean, yeah, I mean, that doesn't need any explanation. It needs to be able to happen. You know, it's crazy that you can't actually sling your weapon. Belt options, just more belt options overall. Great idea. What about a rifle range, maybe in Erewhon or somewhere else that you can go and physically go and test weapons um, or at different ranges? It's literally just there for that. There's no bad guys there or anything like that. Um, you could have a, uh, you can even have a bivouac next to it or something like that, or just have it in error one. Or like I said, people want an offline mode. Um, I can't see that happening, but because I think it's too far into the game, you might get it in the next one. But people do want it. G3 combat shirt with rolled up sleeves and other shirts with rolled up sleeves. I agree with this. Um, not sure why we haven't been given that. I, I wish they would just give us all the gear from Wildlands and just give it to us straight away because we need it all. Desert, desert environment, we've kind of talked about this. We talked about this in the original one. Hopefully on Moa Island we'll get that. Um, getting spotted in an enemy vehicle. Now, yeah, I, I do agree with this one. Because if you think when you get spotted by an enemy vehicle, what they always see you. Even if you're driving in an APC, they know who you are. And they shouldn't really, should they? That what? Why? Why do they do that? I don't know. They shouldn't be able to spot you if you're driving in one of their vehicles, really. But, yeah, I mean, I kind of get why they do it, to make it more interesting and have more battles, but mm, it shouldn't shouldn't really happen. But um, there we go. So people want to uh, apply all, all gear camos. So, for example, you, you put all your uniform on. Let's say you've put your guy and he's wearing all black and you want to change it to, um, I don't know, a woodland camo, you should be able to just press one button and change the whole lot to woodland camo instead of going in separately. Yeah, I mean, it would save time. Building destructibility, obviously uh, that's not going to happen because it's not built for that and the engine's not built for that. But I'd like to see it, you know, been able to put C4 on something and actually blow it up. Uh, I'd be all up for that. But I think you're looking at a new game for that. World War One and World War Two guns, maybe Cold War weapons. No reason why a few of those can't be thrown in. Um, because if you look at it, there's a lot of World War II and Cold War history on the island. It could be that you find an old weapons cache or something like that. No reason why they can't be have a few of those added just for fun. Um, and a wingsuit. Yeah, all up for a wingsuit. Why not? You know, there's lots of verticality in terms of jumping, jumping off of cliffs and things like that. So a wingsuit would be awesome. Being able to call in air support. Yeah, another one that's interesting. Not sure how it would work, because if you could call in air support, why aren't the rest of those people who are giving you air support coming in to help you in the first place? It kind of clashes a little bit with the story. But, you know, they're just some more that you guys have given us. And I just honestly so thankful that, A, for the reception that that first video got, all of your comments that you gave us, and, and people have watched the part one of the of the feedback these videos are all about your feedback. This is everything that you guys want in the game. So we are going to pass this on to Ubisoft 100%. So thank you so much. And thank you for supporting our channel. Thank you for subscribing if you have. And thank you for liking any of our videos. Really, really massive shout out to all of you. Uh, please take care out there. And um, we will see you again on the next one. Bye bye.